And I would do anything for love. I would do anything for love. I would do anything for love. But I won't do that. Hello and welcome to the Superpower Dare Die team. I'm Peter. And I'm Rick. And today we're reviewing the 1999 film Fight Club. Second rule of Fight Club is we do not talk about Fight Club. Starring Meatloaf and a lesser known person called Brad Pitt and an even lesser known person named Edward Norton. Pete, this is an older movie. Uh, we've decided to watch it for reasons that I might explain later on, but. Uh, I'll also point out that because it's an older movie, there's going to be spoilers in here. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it, then watch this review. Um, Pete, what's your relationship with the movie? I saw um, this movie when it first came out. I saw it at the cinemas. Um, I think it was after it was after Seven. I'd really enjoyed Seven, David mm-hmm. Fincher's movie Seven. <laughs> Did not um, like that at all. Well, I mean, it was a horrible movie, but it was a mm. good movie. Um, so... I watched this one. I liked it. I didn't love it. I know that this is a movie that some people really grabbed onto, latched onto and loved it. And it's become a real pop culture type movie. People quote it. um, There's famous lines from it. You can't die for insomnia. Um, But I never really visited it again. Um, I saw probably the end bit. on Caught the end of it on TV one time, but that's about Mm -hmm. it. So this was the first time that I've seen it since it came out like the full movie and i guess um i think i still like it i I still don't love it well i I hadn't seen it and the reason i hadn't seen it is because of the title i was just i honestly thought i'd never seen trailers for it or anything like that i honestly thought this was about people who would go into a secret boxing ring and then it was just about fighting basically Mm -hmm. i had no interest in it i didn't i don't really care and i managed to avoid it for 20 odd years and avoid everything about it even the ending so i was listening to the radio the other morning and uh turns out in china they've uh changed the ending of it so this was a news story that came out and because of the chinese government changing the ending to fight club they were talking about the ending of it which I was like, wow, okay, that sounded nothing like the movie that I thought it was. So I was curious to watch it. So that's how we ended up watching this one because I wanted to see it. What the government has done is uh, it pl- the movie plays up to a point and then there's just like a, a, a title card come up on the screen saying um, after clues left by Tyler Durden, the authorities ar- ar- arrested him, stopped the buildings from blowing up and put him in a mental asylum. Okay. So did you, you didn't know about the Tyler Durden twist then? No, and I still didn't know about it going into the movie, but I kind of, you know how you, uh, if you're watching a movie and you know, I said this one, the ending had been spoiled for me, so I thought this isn't what it quite seems. Yeah. So I kind of twigged halfway through the movie, a bit like um, Sixth Sense. Yeah. I didn't see that till a few I don't know, maybe six months after it came out and everyone was going, you never guess this twist, you never guess the twist. So I went into the movie looking for the twist. Yeah. And I yeah. picked that one pretty much straight away. And I just said, well, I know the twist. Bruce Willis is, was right. You should have seen his face. So I watched that movie <laughs> thinking, oh, I'm right, I'm right. But yeah, yeah. this one I didn't know. Um, and the same, it's sort of been copied or homaged later and later movies like yeah. in the joker we talked a bit about the joker the other day and that had a very similar type twist in it and done very yeah, sim- like, it did, much yeah. the same as well so yeah. i reckon if like a few movies have done it since then but i think this I, is probably one yeah. of the first movies that did it in that way i, I think i was completely um blown away by it from from pretty much the start it's shot so well so david fincher like you said he, he's done seven he always yeah. seem, seems to go pretty dark with his movies well, i was what yes he does like a dark movie um i was watching i was watching it with my partner who'd seen it and i turned to her there was one point i turned to her and i said are there things flashing on screen is this me yeah. is this a, have we got a bad connection on um netflix or is there something happening and she was keeping quiet she didn't want to try yeah. and reveal anything and so and I they sort of like there's definitely like a flash of brad pitt in one of the oh there's four scenes. of them yeah yeah 
I remember I seeing that when I saw it at the cinema, but I didn't notice it this mm. time. I don't know whether it was the TV or not, but I do remember yeah. at the cinema seeing flashes of him. I'm not sure. Does Edward Norton have a name? Maybe Jack? No, he doesn't. He doesn't have a name. Yeah. No one says his name in the whole the whole movie. In, yeah. and I think on the Internet Movie Database, he's just listed as uh, the narrator. Yeah, a lot of stuff I looked up, he was just the narrator, but there yeah. is some reference to a Jack somewhere. But this is a movie that just makes... Like, I was thinking about it for... And the next day after I watched it, just you sort of in your head, you go over a movie again and you you think about, OK, so, oh, that makes sense that that happened earlier on. I'd, I'd probably watch it again yeah. just to see the setups and because filmmakers do stuff like this, but they actually put setups in there. You don't realise they're setups because, you know, you don't know the big twist until the end. I, th I noticed like some things that like when I watched it in 1999, IKEA wasn't a thing in Australia. And uh, yeah. like watching it this time, it's like, oh, that's what they were talking about. Like it's just little <laughs> things. But I like, you know, the the shots of him building up all the um, material things in his house yeah. and like having the price and having the description and that sort of thing. I thought, well, that was clever. That was pretty innovative for its time. There's a comment. I don't know if it's in the film or it might have been just in something that I read about it later on, but it was about the fact that, um, you know, you, you, you're keeping on. Oh no! I think it was uh, one of Tyler Durden's little rants about how you keep you, know, you work jobs that you hate to buy things that you don't need. Yeah. And you think you know, and TV and everything that has you believing that you're just going to be rich and a millionaire, and you're not. Yeah. I'm raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. We're very, very pissed off. But I look at kids today who think they're going to make millions off um, YouTube <laughs> videos. But we won't. I think movie reviewers can do quite well out of it. But I said before that, like, it, the movie must have been very memorable because there was lots of things that I remembered. Like, I remembered, um, like, the penguin in the cave. I remembered the apartment stuff with all the products. I remembered the... Um, him and his mundane job and i remembered yep. um the the grotty house that they're squatting at i remember um helena bonham carter's uh little toy on the the bureau there um lots of things just stuck in my head but one thing i was wrong about is i always thought that meatloaf meatloaf's character gets killed in the movie but yeah. i for some reason in my head i thought his stomach got split open on a barbed wire fence oh really and that's how he died. But in oh, the movie, it's, just, of... it's the bag of fat that they did it. So, you know, obviously, uh, Tyler Durden was his, his, uh, his the anti-person, the anti-Edward Norton, anti-narrator. But it was so part he was of everything his that, mental part of his psych. Or, so, yeah, so yeah. When he, when, whenever Edward Norton blacked out or whatever, then he became Tyler Durden. Hello? I haven't seen you in any support groups. I'm a new one. There was, okay, so towards the end, when he was trying to then undo everything that you know, he'd done as Tyler Durden tried to stop the bombs going off and that, yeah, and he'd already, as Tyler Durden had already set up, and was expecting that to happen, so had already told all the people, okay, if I come to you doing this and this, yeah. And then so there's the point at the end where he is rid of the split personality. He finally he shoots himself that. in the head. Yeah. And he resolves that whole split personality, but does he end up becoming Tyler Durden or is he... Yeah, I think he's probably just accepted it at that point, but I feel like that's how he got rid of Tyler Durden by shooting himself, which... I'm still a little bit unclear whether he got rid of Tyler Durden's personality by doing that and just became his normal... Because of, the, because of his complete lack of emotion when the watching he actually turned to watch the buildings go down and yeah. I, i'm wondering if he he just gave in and became that tired of dirt that's that's yeah, kind of the question that i was in i really like this movie uh it has kept me thinking since i watched it like i like yeah. a movie that you're still thinking about a few days later and i you know i like it but it's just for whatever reason hasn't grabbed me as much as yeah. some other things have and hasn't grabbed me like it grabbed other people but it's well directed it's well acted like it's well made Pete, would you recommend Fight Club? I would recommend it. It's a, it's a good movie. It's well made. It's well acted. There's mm. lots of things to think about in it. Um, it didn't grab me like other people, and like it's grabbed other people, but 
you know, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be like a classic to you. Oh, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, after watching Star Wars and superheroes galore for the last, I don't know, 20 years, this was a real unexpected breath of fresh air for me. I really liked it and I would, I would recommend other people watch it. Maybe watch it again to see what else you get out of it. So, Thank you for watching our Fight Club review. If you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram, on Facebook and on Twitter. Thanks very much for watching everyone and thanks for your support. We'll see you next time. See ya. See ya. Hello and welcome to the Superpower Dare Die team. I'm Peter. And I'm Rick, and today we're reviewing the 1999 film Fight Club, starring Meatloaf, someone called Brad Pitt, and another person. Ba 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 ba.